The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. We are back. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it is 6 p.m. April 11th, 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. That means it's time for another installment of Southern Nevada Sports coming to you from www.dbtv.com. My name is Bill Miller, co-host along with Jeff Belknap. And we are, again, very, very fortunate to have the our only owner, Yep. of a major to sports this point, to, to this point, point. On, yeah i don't want to cut us out for the rest of you know <laughs> perpetuity uh, the owner and ceo of the red hot vegas lights fc football club here in las vegas brett lashbrook brett how you doing man I am good. I'm, you know, Bill Foley is just busy. He's got, a, he's got something else going on tonight. But he'll, <laughs> he'll be true. on the show in no time. I have no doubt. He's a fake I hope boy. so. Yeah, it, it, I'll is, wait till after the season. I'm good with that. Yeah, it, is there something else going on in town tonight? I hadn't heard anything about. It. But yeah, we will absolutely get. If case you're, you know, you're absolutely off the planet or been under a rock tonight. Game one, Vegas Knights playoff home game against the L.A. Kings. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's hard to believe it's that. It's got to be uh, electric down yeah, there. Yeah, right it, the, the, the whole atmosphere here in town is absolutely. But, but Brett, let's concentrate on Vegas Lights football. How, first of all, how are you doing? I am doing fantastic. We are just uh, a couple of days away from our next home game. And, yes. Uh, uh, the momentum continues to grow, boys. I love it. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the needless to say, uh, right now. Uh, you're uh, currently in Group B of the USL. Uh, you're in uh, tied for sixth place. Uh, three well, it's, it's a little misleading. We had a bye week, so I, you know, I always say you got to look at points per game. We yes, are, you, we are undefeated with two it, wins and a tie. You've only played uh, three matches where these other teams have played more. Yeah, so some of those teams have played five games. Yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm going to push back on this, right? We are <laughs> we are undefeated and uh, points per game. We're at the top of the table. I yeah. love it. Yeah, and needless to say. Um, you know, it has been 10, 10 days since the last match. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, actually. Yeah, about that. So, yeah. Uh, you know, and of course, uh, this uh, this Saturday, uh, 8 p.m., uh, this is again over at Cashman Field. And you're going up against Sacramento Republic FC. Yeah, it's so it's uh, they are a very very strong team. They are widely rumored to be being moved up to Major League Soccer here in the very near future. Oh, wow. uh, they also are undefeated, um, and they are just another one of those just incredibly successful uh, USL success stories, and are one of those markets that are blazing the way um, and giving us that that guide as well. Of you know they they sold out every game at 10,000 plus fans. Um, in their existence for the last five years. They're about to go to Major League Soccer. And when you look at what we can do here in Las Vegas, it's looking at what these other markets have done. Seven of the last 11 MLS expansion teams have come from, from USL. Um, and so there's, there's something a, a little bit more personal about this game on Saturday. Not only are they undefeated, not only are they uh, one of the top teams in the leagues, but they also, in many ways, are doing what we want to do in the next couple of years. Oh, beautiful. Wow. Yeah, that is excellent. And, and hats off to the, uh, uh, the Sacramento organization because clearly they're doing some things right up there. Yeah, they have, uh, they have done a, just an amazing, amazing job. You know, and, but that and changes on Saturday, boys. Right? We can, <laughs> that's that's the we can like them off right. the field. On the field, we're going to show them who the new king is. Hey, that's there right. you go. Beautiful. And uh, you know, so listen, a uh, couple of things. Um, obviously, it, by the way, congratulations to the coach Isidro Sanchez. He's uh, the USL Coach of the Month. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, it's listen. He, I thought his comments uh, to the media earlier today were just were were spot on. Of this is not the goal. Um, and in fact, this is a testament to what we're doing, but the real challenge is maintaining it. It's not just starting quick and uh, everything else, but it's maintaining it. And it's just like every league, it's a long, regular season, and it's a grind. Um, and being able to get out um, first three games, being undefeated, you know, being this unknown team, not having, having low expectations, um, and doing that, it's a great testament, right? We made the joke earlier today in the office, it's our first piece of hardware. Um, but by no means is this where we want to stop. 
no, yeah. no. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. So I went to the game the uh, last week, and I had a great time. The whole family had a great time from the – you know, coming down and the mariachis playing to the, the food trucks, the, like everything that was going on, which the only downside was I spilled some food on my shirt and I was a little upset. <laughs> but what it made me do was actually go buy a shirt because it was it was like one of those messy spills. It was like the messiest food possible in the tiniest concourse. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it, it actually probed me to go buy some shirts. So I bought shirts for the family. Very cool. And everyone was excited. They put the shirts on immediately. We went out there. We, we became fans immediately it was a great time i love sitting out there the temperature was beautiful yeah. and i'm glad i didn't go to no i shouldn't say it i i'm the the 40 degree games i'm glad i didn't choose one of those games to go to but, uh, exactly it so was beautiful so it's funny i was just talking um with one of the staff members um before this call and you know this saturday is really that first game where we're going to have beautiful weather there's nothing conflicting right last week we had it was spring break it was easter weekend the golden knights were playing at the exact same time and still yeah. getting eight thousand through the door this weekend is that first weekend where it's 70 degrees there's nothing else you know in theory right it's the entertainment capital of the world there's always something going on but there's nothing directly going head to head right we're just so excited because we know that there's just so many people still out in the community that haven't yet come to a game and we say if we can just get you to come to cashman field once for a soccer game we know you're going to come back and we're going to have great weather a great opponent a great game um we're really really excited about what the, that walk-up crowd is going to look like on saturday That's beautiful oh fantastic yeah i think we can finally say that and i don't uh, i'm going i'm real confident in this that the 40 degree 30 mile an hour <laughs> win i think that's in our rear view mirror worse, yes. <laughs> definitely so in the rear view mirror those days are over so you know um going ahead um also it looks like you now have a, a tv agreement uh to broadcast the games locally yeah we are really really excited about this so yeah. we partnered with my lv tv that's we'll, right um, We'll have over uh, 20 matches, uh, home and away, televised live, um, over the air. And at the same time, USL announced a comprehensive package where all USL games, including all of our games, will be streamed live on their new ESPN Plus platform. Yep. And then for, for those of you uh, following along uh, outside the United States, um, all the games will be streamed live on YouTube. So nice. I, I, this was really important to me to make sure that all of our fans have access to every single one of our games without having to buy a cable subscription. Um, and, and you guys know this as well through your, your mediums as well. Of the, that 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 landscape of media is changing left and right, um, and to be able to, to um, have access on uh, TV without having to have the cable subscription was just really really important. And I think it's going to be great for our fans. And no matter where they are, where we're building a lights nation, um, people have access to it. Well, well congratulations, I love this. Brad. I mean, that is. Uh that is well done, and and again, it just offers more exposure to Vegas Lights football and uh, also to USL in general. Yeah, and, and I think it's uh, it's a. I don't want this to sound too self-serving, right? But it's a testament to what we've built in the first couple months of the season that we have local TV stations coming to us and trying to figure out how to do a deal like this. Um, and I think it's just a real testament, not just to what we're building here, but just to soccer in America. And that in 2018, um, where, where the sport is, right? That you have you have stations like My LV TV uh, proactively trying to get these types of deals done. So it's I, it's just a further testament to where the sport is. Here, here. Absolutely. Here, here. That's great. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, uh, Jeff, did you sit down in the, uh, the the rabbit section, you and the family? I did not, but you know what? I was upset. I, you know, got... I thought I saw him, but his face was painted, so I'm not uh, sure yeah. if that was you or not. <laughs> hey, it's funny you say that because I actually have some masks because uh, the last time I was in Mexico, it was World Cup. Yeah. And <laughs> the streets were madhouse. They actually that was one of the years that they won the first the first game. Yeah. So it was absolute madhouse. They had tours and the like cars parades everything. So I was like, I got to get a mask. This is really great. So I told my wife, I'm like, the next time I come, I'm wearing the mask. So I I watched the match. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it, but I watched the match. Uh, I think it was on Monday. Yeah. And uh, there was a guy in a mask, and I was just thinking that that might be <laughs> Jeff. Uh, he's you know he's he's got a lot of action going, you know. And I'm thinking, yeah, right, you know, that that, that might. Some of our fans boy. have llama masks, so I don't know if that was him also, right? There's a real mystery going on of which mask was he under. I, I love the llama mask, but first of all, I'm never going to tell you what mask he'll be under. That's part of the like whole thing of wearing a mask, right? 
<laughs> you know, watching that section on on TV, it, it is these guys, these folks are into it. Oh, it's great. You know, and it's just it's nonstop. It's the drums, it's the horns. I, I mean, you know, and you absolutely. You know, if you watch, you know, football or soccer, as I do, on a global basis, you know, that's the action. That is what's going on. You know, it is not just waiting for something to happen. Yes. You know, the, these sections are for those fans. It's the ultras. It's the guy, It's the people who are in it to win it. And I, I, I couldn't agree more, and not to sound like a, too much like a salesman. You know, when you look at the ticket price, right, the, with tickets starting as low as $10 with season tickets in yes. the front row behind the goal, right, 10 feet from, away from the opposing team's goalkeeper, right? I mean, it's just a great, great experience, right? Oh, and great. It's, I, You heard me say this when, I, when I've been on the show before, of, you know, trying to create that little slice of Mexico City or London or Barcelona or Madrid. We can, will, and are doing that here in downtown Las Vegas, and that's just really, really exciting. Okay, so I'm going to give you an idea here. I'm giving you a pregame party inside okay. the stadium, dollar beers for until – the fifth minute and watch, and watch that that line go out the door <laughs> why the fifth minute what i don't know well, i don't want to do you know i know uh, the, 50, the 51's due to dollar beer night and i know that could that tap into the, the income or whatever but yeah man it's you know it's a really good time and you know my my daughter who's 14 very hard to keep excited and whatever she's watching the game she's getting excited we scored a goal she jumps up and it, it helped that the the, all the goals that have been scored so far have been on the the fan side oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah so that i mean you you're able to see that and you're like literally like you were saying you know 10 or 20 yards away from this action going on you know yeah, it's just it, beautiful it is absolutely amazing and uh you know you could the, the energy is palatable i mean you could feel it you know just watching it i mean i crank up the volume on my laptop you know and i replay the goals and it's like you know Oh, okay, I got to get down. And then there. what's also great there. is after the game, we, we you know became the first team to guarantee that all of our players will take off their game worn jerseys yes. and give it into a, to a, to a, to a fan in the crowd. They'll sign autographs. So we like to say, win or lose, we're going to throw a party, right? And it'll yes. start at five thirty outside with the Zappos tailgate and the food trucks and the music and the llamas and the and the and the games. And then win or lose, right? Come on down, you know, to to the front row, get autographs, get jerseys, and just just have fun. That's right, folks. And just a reminder, the Zappos tailgate party starts at 530 on game day uh, at Cashman Field. And, uh, you know, that's that's just a celebration and an event in itself. And then, of course, you've got the game starting at 8 o'clock. Well, and this is I'm going to throw this out there because this I know is an issue that people always think about when they're going to games. Transportation, getting in, the parking, easy. Yep. Getting out, easy. Easy. Uber yeah. pickup, great. Yep. I mean, the the thing is, the 51s have kind of worked out to, like this whole method. So if these cars are going that way. These cars are going that way. We got out of there five minutes. I was back home in 30 minutes, and I'm talking about Southwest. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it, it's it's crazy how so few or not as many people as you would think realize. There's a 60-acre site with a 10,000-seat stadium in the heart of the city, literally smack dab in the metro area and two minutes from the Spaghetti Bowl. Uh, the transportation is so, so easy. It's fantastic. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I, 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 when, I, when I pulled out of there, I was like, oh, this is going to be a mess. And I was like, wait, oh, hold on. I'm on Washington. Wait, <laughs> I'm on the freeway already. You know, I was like, this is great. You know, they did a really good job. Hats off to the staff over there. Excellent. Yeah. So tell me, uh, you know, Brett, what uh, – you know, what do you have, uh, you know, just in terms of some short-term goals, maybe that you'd like to share with us, maybe not. We're always looking for a breaking news story here uh, <laughs> whenever we have the opportunity. Breaking, breaking news stories is, uh, you know, it's uh, this Saturday, it's a high of 76 degrees and, you know, a chance Woo! of lots of goals. That's what, that's what, we, that's what we've been, uh, been, been joking about, right? I mean, it's... Uh, Hello. This is this is growing, right? And I see the success of the Golden Knights. I see the excitement for the Raiders. I see 50,000 people come through our turnstiles already, and I just realized what you guys already knew. We are a sports city, um, and sports cities just feed uh, uh, feed on one another, if that if that makes sense, right? And the yeah. more success the Golden Knights have, the more success the Running Rebels have, et cetera, et cetera, raising tides raise all ships. And uh, I am, you know, I, I've, I've said it earlier, and I'll just keep saying it. 
I know if we can get everyone into Cashman Field once to see what it's like for a soccer. You know, if they if they've never been to to a baseball game there, they won't know it's a baseball stadium. If they've been to a baseball game there, it'll be completely different. We move the mound, we bring in grass on all the dirt, we cover all the signs, and like what you were saying, you go behind the goal and you sing and you dance and you cheer and you march and you drum. And we got smoke bombs going and confetti oh, yeah. cannons going, and uh, it's just a big big party. Um, and, you know, that's that's the breaking news, right? We've got to get everyone out there to try it once because I, I know. If I can get you out there once, I'm going to get you out there again. So, Bill, they actually bring people down. They sell literally like bags of confetti. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, this is great. Yes. You know, so like, you know, immediately when there's a goal, you see all this confetti come up from the crowd. And it's like, it's a party. I mean, yeah. it's basically a big party. It's a lot, the confetti is a lot better when the 40, 40 mile per hour winds uh, die down. <laughs> I will tell you the, the the first game. I'll share a funny story. We had the confetti cannons at the top of the at the at the upper deck uh, at at Cashman, and we shot them off, and they didn't even make it to the the back, back <laughs> of the stand, right? I mean, they just literally the, the confetti got caught in the air, and just like you go outside the stadium, and it's all outside the stadium. The people so outside we, uh, were like, "Yeah, we yeah, had a confetti cannon." You know, it was preseason for everybody. <laughs> hey, see, the best part about that is there was somebody outside thinking. Wow, they're shooting confetti yeah, outside. outside too. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, you can only imagine what's going really, on inside. They're, they're pros. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are on it. That's great. Good so, story. So you've got, uh, of course, the game uh, this Saturday, and then you've got uh, actually a Friday night game coming up on April 27th. Yeah, so it'll be uh, Friday night against uh, San Antonio, uh, and that team is actually owned by the NBA San Antonio Spurs. Okay. Okay. Um, so another really well-run organization, another example of the, the growth of USL and the, the investment and the types of cities and owners um, that, that are coming in. So uh, it'll be another exciting game. It'll be our first non-Saturday night game. Um, so it'll be interesting to make it kind of a Friday night party uh, in downtown Las Vegas and you know just keep the machine going. Oh yeah, absolutely, and uh, and then that game is at eight p.m. and uh, and of course, uh, so the Zappos party again five thirty. That's when is it, is it going to kick off? Yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah, and uh, and let me ask you, you know, because uh, do you have? I mean, clearly, you know, you guys are obviously competitors, and, and you know, you're, you're you're looking to compete against all these franchises. But as owners, um, you know, you guys are all obviously have you know prizes. That is, uh, to, you know, to promote the USL as a whole but also to promote your clubs to take that next step. Uh, I mean, is there a lot of just like sort of sharing that uh, the success stories around the owners? Yeah, I, I am a big, big believer, and I, uh, my background uh, is, is working at the Major League Soccer League office and then helping run a, a Major League Soccer team in Orlando, Florida. So I am a big, big believer in sharing of best practices, and I like to say we're competitors on the field, but we're business partners off the field. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, with everyone except maybe Rito, right? <laughs> with, you know, we don't want to share any ideas with, right? But, but everyone else, uh, you, listen, we're all, we're all doing stuff, right? We're not, we're not competing with San Antonio for, for ticket sales and sponsors. Right, so if they if they had a great idea or vice versa, uh, I am always for those types of best practices and continue to learn. And it's the same thing with the other sports. Um, l listen, I, I'm constantly learning from the Golden Knights and UNLV, et cetera, et cetera. Right, of going to those games and also thinking, okay, what are they doing well? What are they? What can we learn fr from them? So, right. Uh, while we never share anything on the field and in player secrets or you know strategy and that sort, off the field, absolutely, there's 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 shared resources. Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah, you know, it's a way to do it actually. Oh yeah. Again, Definitely. except for the Reno, they can take us from on their own. <laughs> They're on their own. They're yeah, on well, their own. yeah. Well, you know what? You got to draw the line somewhere, Brett. Yeah, you got to draw the line somewhere, man. <laughs> hey, you <laughs> can't just drawn. have these people coming down here willy nilly showing That's out. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Listen, uh, you gotta, you gotta do your own thing. Um, you know, and and of course, uh, you know, um, looking at the schedule right after the game on Friday, the the twenty seventh, you got a very quick turnaround. Yeah, so then we actually go up to Salt Lake City and uh, a team called Real Monarchs uh, Salt Lake City, which is um, partnered with the Major League Soccer team in Salt Lake. Yeah, Real Salt uh, they Lake. are actually opening a brand new 5,000 seat stadium oh, uh, nice. in the suburbs of Salt Lake. So again, yeah. another example of that growth of USL, uh, where you see MLS teams investing in it and building their own uh, soccer specific stadium. So we actually will open their stadium um, on Monday, April oh, 30th. Yeah. yeah, it's in uh, Harriman, Utah, I think. Yep, just yeah. in the suburbs of, of Salt Lake. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, you know, I mean, I've been up there, and uh, I've been to, like, uh, because uh, my day job, we've got a client up in West Jordan, uh, which is a suburb of uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, it's a beautiful area, and 
luckily it's the end of april so i don't think you'll see any snow on the ground but anything well, is possible rule nothing out rule yeah, nothing really, out. <laughs> you can't rule anything out in that yeah. area until I think probably the about june saying that when the schedule came out as well right we all know that that's mother nature doesn't always uh play along that's true no definitely but and that's a that's a pretty quick that's about a 72 hour turnaround um after you know your game against san antonio yeah, it, it, it is uh, it, it is tight, um, and the, the league had given us the option of playing that game on Thursday, but we wanted to play it on Friday. Um, you know, Chalice, our head coach, is just a great, great guy, and, and sat with him and talked about it, and he said it's more important to me to have a, a packed house um, than it is to have 24 hours more rest. That's so great. Um, and I think that's just a testament that the players and the coaches, along with the front office staff, we're all in this together, Bought right, in. of how do we build this. Um, and we need to schedule accordingly. Well, we're bought in too, man. Amen. With you. Yeah. That is fantastic. Yeah, we are in it. it. Uh, and Keep uh, wearing we... your llama mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I got <laughs> Just don't have anyone over there shooting my body mass and trying to figure out, like, if this is really the guy. <laughs> this guy? Is this that guy? <laughs> oh, so uh, just tell us again real quick, how can guys reach you, or people reach you, Twitter, uh, Facebook? Yeah, so go to lightsfc.com uh, or at LVLightsFC um, for all, all the information, buy tickets. Um, season tickets are still available. You know, like, like I said, it's down to $10 a game. It includes a free jersey. It's wow. dollar wow. value. Uh, awesome. Like I say, we have the, the, the craziest, boldest, most fashion-forward jersey in all of sports. And, you know, when the guys score a goal on the inside of the jersey, it has a big smile emoji, right? They yeah, put it up over yeah, their yeah. face and run around. So uh, we're, we're a lot of fun, right? All, all, all the listeners and viewers out there, um, please come on out to, to Cashman Field. Just By the way, Bill. LightsFC.com. Find a game. You will have a great time. By the way, Bill did say if you gave him a jersey, he'd wear it on the air. So <laughs> I'll take you up on that. I'll take you up on that. <laughs> yeah, you jersey. Gotta, you gotta bring me in the studio, and I'll, I'll take you up on that. Beautiful. <laughs> that sounds good to us. Even just a scarf, Brett. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I will absolutely wear it. That's that hey, is for you sure. You know, wear my shirt the same day, man. I'm a big fan. I already wore the shirt a couple of times. And oh, this is one th- other thing I want to mention. So I walked out to my car. And I, I actually drove home, and the next day I'm like, what is it on my car? They actually put a little magnet of the, the logo and everything on the car in, while it was in the parking lot. Okay. And now, and now I'm driving around, and I'm seeing these magnets all over, and I'm like, this is great. I mean, talk about some, like, this is glorious so advertising. There was one fan, fan that, up, that wrote us and said, I can't believe you put a sticker on my new car. And we were like, it's not a sticker, ma'am. It's not a sticker. You just, it'll peel right off. It'll peel right off. Just a magnet. Right off. Oh, you know, that is excellent. I mean, you know, listen, you guys are really putting together some things. I mean, you know, you, you, you said from the very outset, this is going to be a Las Vegas team. Yeah, you know, and you have kept your word. Uh, you and your team and your staff there, uh, you're making all the right moves. Uh, I mean, I'm just bringing the people. I go watch adult soccer on uh, Sunday mornings, you know, a few places around town, you know, and I've seen lights uh, scarves, uh, I've seen lights T-shirts, and you know, so you're you're definitely making an impact. Yeah, and congratulations. Uh, I mean, because well, I still you. think I the best is yet to you come. Know, we were the largest city, the second largest city in the world without a professional soccer team. So. The time was way, way overdue. All right, Las Vegas deserved high, you know, high, high-level professional soccer for, for many, many years, and for a variety of reasons, it didn't. It, it you know, it took to this year to, to get it done. But this is for the community, by the community, of the community, and it's it's many, many years overdue. Beautiful. Well, love it. You know, well, Brad, needless to say, man, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to uh, to chat with us tonight on tonight's show. As always, man, you're a friend of the show. We consider you a friend of the show. Excellent. You're always welcome, and we hope to obviously have you on soon and and good luck uh this saturday uh let, let's let's keep the momentum up thank you we hope to see everyone out there on saturday night and i'll get you that jersey as soon as i see you again <laughs> all right man <laughs> thanks T- man all take right. care thanks guys Be all right ah uh, brett beautiful. lashbrook owner ceo of the red hot vegas lights soccer club here in town uh they've got a game this saturday at cashman field 8 p.m and that's going to be against uh, the uh, Sacramento FC team, uh, one of the best teams. And apparently, as uh, Brett just indicated, it looks like they might be being promoted to MLS yep. um, next season. That's at 8 p.m. And, of course, at 5.30 on every home game, the Zappos tailgate party uh, kicks into high gear. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to shift gears. This is Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from WWDBTV.com. We'll be right back. The golf store you've been waiting for is now open. Bob Allen Golf is ready to help you take your game to the next level. 
Bob Allen Golf is located at 6415 South Fort Apache, Las Vegas 89148. Choose your favorite clubs from our selection of Bridgestone, Callaway, Cleveland, XXIO, Srixon, Ping, Wilson, and more. We'll custom fit them in our state-of-the-art full swing golf simulator. Come hang out with us and practice on our putting green to find out which club is perfect for you. Have your clubs repaired, reshafted, and regripped in our on-site tour shop. And talk about accessories. Guys and gals will feel comfortable and look sharp in the many sizes, colors, and options of apparel from Greg Norman, Black Clover, Under Armour, and more. The team at Bob Allen Golf takes your game as seriously as you do. Join our online family at BobAllenGolf.com and stop in the store to meet us. Remember, at Bob Allen Golf, your game is in the bag. Need help with your taxes? Numbers not adding up? Wondering how recent tax changes might affect you? Don't pay more in taxes than you have to. Give us a call. No matter how complex your taxes may be, the best tax professionals are at your disposal. For fast refunds and professional service, give us a call today. We are back. Round two, the knockout round this week. Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from www.dbtv.com. My name is Bill Miller, co-host along with Jeff Belnett. And with us, our man, the NBA man from the ATL, Torrance Hall. How are you, Torrance? I'm good, brothers. How y'all doing out there in Vegas today? Fabulous. Oh, fabulous, man. We are doing fantastic. What's going on, Jeff? What's going on, Bill? Y'all great? Oh, yeah. Doing great. Yes, sir. Cool, cool. And we are finally in the home stretch of the NBA season. And yet there is still, I think, three playoff positions uh, that are still undetermined yet, if I'm not mistaken. I'm thinking of it a little bit less now, now that I'm looking at it. It looks like the East is set. <laughs> okay. And then mm -hmm. uh, the top seven positions are set. Last game is between uh, Minnesota and Denver. So right. basically the, the teams are going to get massacred first. Right. And they're playing each other, just out of, curi well. just out of uh, coincidence. <laughs> It just isn't that always yeah, the... Isn't that great? Oh, so God. So this is the drama. 78-77 uh, uh, Minnesota right now in Minnesota. You should think that they'd be able to pull it off. Uh, let's, uh, well, I'm sure somebody is either... Uh, oh, man, I don't know. Somebody's got to win that game. <laughs> that's right. They're going to be the, the, way I, the winner play is the AC, basically. And they play Houston. Play in Houston, yeah. And I'll tell you this. The, the, the pressure is all on Houston. All they need to do. This is everything that they possibly could have dreamt of uh, at the beginning of the year. And that is mm -hmm. having the number one seed. And it could all come crashing down if for some reason their game disappears against an AC. Well, I'll, t I'll tell you this, Bill. This is, the, this is probably the biggest series of the Houston, well, James Harden and the Houston Rockets uh, in years because, like you said, they can't go out like uh, Dallas did a few years ago or almost 10 years ago against Golden State just messing around. That Minnesota team is very scrappy, good players on that team. Absolutely young, too. If they have a choice, I'm sure they would rather play Denver. Um, oh, any day. Yeah. Any day. So I am really rooting for Minnesota here. <laughs> Wait, yeah. are you not hey, a Houston I fan? Would be, I wouldn't be surprised if Minnesota win that series. Yeah, I honestly would. I, I would not. I, if Minnesota wins this game, I am going to be rooting for Minnesota against Houston. Wait, it's what? not because I'm a anti-Houston oh, okay. as much as I would like to see an underdog like an okay. AC right. beat whoever it was, either I, I, Houston I, or Golden State. I thought that there was like some deep-rooted oh, no. like something I needed to hear about. No, I'm like some people I know. Um, <laughs> I'm not a hater. Okay, I don't, you know, I don't run out and just say, "Wow, I just don't like them because I don't like them." Well, actually, uh, speaking of that, they <laughs> the Lakers did win 34 games, yes, which is good, you know, pretty decent considering, yeah, you know, ended 420, which is probably what most of those guys are doing after the games, you know. So yeah, good spot. wow, they presented it 420. <laughs> I see it as you say it. <laughs> okay, just snuck that one in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm excited to see because we're going to see some good series. I mean, I, can, I really can't see. I'm looking for an upset here in these series, and I don't see it in the West. I see Houston, Golden State, Utah winning easily. The Portland, uh, New Orleans series could go either way. I do think Portland's a better team, so we'll see what yeah. happens after that. 
You know, so, and, uh, you know, uh, guys, you know, I, I think that uh, considering uh, this is absolutely a perfect time for us uh, to, to do some predictions. Okay. And, uh, and so before we get to those and, you know, we'll, and just make it very, very quick, um, you know, Torrance, who is your surprise team? Pick two teams, surprise team in the East and surprise team in the West. All right, surprise team in the East. Um, Philadelphia 76ers. There you go. They made it, they, they were so bad the last few years, and they made it to the playoffs. Agreed. You know, yeah, yeah. Agreed. I mean, they, they really made a turnaround for that city. So that's, I didn't think it was going to make be like the third seed. I thought it'd be like the eighth seed. Yeah, you know, and just to the finish as strongly as they have. Oh, um, yes. They finished very, and without MB. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I mean, you know, this is a young, hungry team. Uh, that has been built on draft picks, you know, right. over the last few years. Uh, but they, you know, they they finally have kind of found their 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 mojo in, in right. the second half, and to uh, finish as strong as they did, um, you know, they, they they clearly can be a surprise. Either that, right. or they're going to just pick a really bad time to <laughs> yeah uh, to, to begin losing games uh, because you know the, these are quick series sometimes. Well, right. I have to agree right. with that. I think Philadelphia in the East, by far. The, my biggest surprise i kind of picked them pegged them to be a, an eight seed mm -hmm. the fact that they were able to sneak up the ladder and get up to that three seed i think is great yeah right yeah that they're they're obviously they're my pick as well in the east uh in the west who do you who's your surprise wait hold on don't let them steal my thunder twice oh okay <laughs> no i actually uh, utah is mine because i i really didn't uh peg them out to be a uh in the west in the West. Yeah. Oh, wait, did yeah, you say we the were East? saying the East. I think we all agreed on Philadelphia for the East. Oh, so we were talking about the West. Yes, I was oh, just going to. Yeah. Oh, right, right. <laughs> okay, yeah. We're not trying to, you know, cut you out of this. <laughs> I thought you were trying to throw me a loop oh, here. Oh my man, come but, on now. But if you look at the Northwest standings, is very odd. You normally don't see this, and when you look at Northwest teams, or any league for that matter, you have Utah, Portland that are tied, Oklahoma City, Minnesota, and Denver all within two games. Yeah. All with mm. winning records. Yep. In the east, which I mean, in the west, which is a difficult place to win anyway, mm -hmm. and then right. that that conference is normally not the power conference. It's normally the one, you know, with the Lakers and the you know the uh, Warriors and everything. So, I'm impressed with everything that what all of these teams have done to give them all themselves an opportunity to make the playoffs. Yeah, you're talking about right. five teams in the conference. Three of them are in. Two of them are actually playing for the fourth spot. I yeah. mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> but um, you know, do you have a particular team that, uh, as far as the West is concerned, Utah? Utah. I never, okay. I never saw them win in that division. I mean, I, I would have thought Portland or Oklahoma City, you know, won that division easily. Well, especially after losing. Um, oh God, I forgot his name. Broke his ankle. Um, uh, Haywood. 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 Yeah, yeah no, especially after losing him to one, free actually, agency. Five you know. minutes. I mean, he, he was also in free agency. Also in free agency. Yeah. 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 And uh, but uh, so Torrance, uh, who's your surprise team in the West? Well, it's, it's just like Jeff. Uh, well, I, I like Utah. Uh, I was surprised to see him. I thought Don Mitchell was doing great all year. I didn't. I didn't expect him to get him to take over like he's doing. He's he's doing great. But since Jeff picked the Utah, I also have another sleeper, and they came out of nowhere. They played a great second half of the season. I said the Trailblazers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Blazers played yeah. real good in the second half. Yeah. I don't. It's like that. I think one of y'all mentioned earlier. It's gonna kind of be a toss up between them and the Pelicans, depending on they can use that height against them. But uh, well, Trailblazers got a nice squad, though. I think that that could actually switch. Be there could be some changes there because they played a night in Portland. Uh, Utah on a six-game winning streak. Portland on a four-game losing streak. I mean, that's a big switch because yeah. obviously Portland right. was in the lead at one point, you know, and then they they just lost their lead. And now it comes right. down to the last game to who wins the division. So yeah. basically, the winner the winner of that game also wins the division tonight. Okay, sure. So that's gonna be yeah. a good game. My surprise team is uh, is the Pelicans. Um, right. You know, I it's just that they in the first half of the season they just didn't seem like a team that was going to be anywhere near mm -hmm. the playoffs. Yeah. Um, that you know they've got a couple of guys who sort of stand out, and then and but then that's about it. But they have managed somehow to find themselves in the position where they're at, um, you know, as a fifth seat, at least as of right now. 
Right. right. And, and uh, you know, and surprisingly, I mean, um, but, you know, hats off again to the East because normally their A seed is typically somebody with a losing record. Yeah. You know, for the first time, and I can't remember how long the, all of the teams in the Eastern Conference playoffs has a winning record. That's true. Right. You know, so that means that, uh, you know, that, that conference as a whole might be getting stronger. Uh, and, uh, mm-hmm. but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. And, uh, by but, the way, talking about your Pelicans, they're taking, uh, San Jose, San Antonio to the woodshed tonight. Really? 85-65 with Woo! a minute and a half to go in the third. So San Antonio could have a very quick exit. Um, yeah, this is. Uh, but you never know. I mean, that's the team you don't want to play. I mean, they're they're definitely a good team. I mean, unfortunately, with a lower away record, which makes it difficult, especially when you're not high seeded. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to have to go win some games on the road, and you know, the NBA right. is hard. To, it's hard to win it on the road. Uh, that it is. That it is. So, all right, guys. So then let's uh, let's start with the the, the East Coast and uh, the opening round, and it looks like uh, that's going to be uh, Toronto and Washington. I'm I'm going Toronto. I I I think it's something wrong. I think Washington window is closed. Although they have a winning record, I just don't think that they're going to beat Toronto. I think Toronto they just just a little more solid at the guard play. I like Bradley Beal and I like Wall, but I like DeRozan a little better. Um, maybe Kyle Lowry kind of. I think Bradley Beal may be better than Kyle Lowry, but I think DeRozan is real aggressive. His his play is good. I think they'll beat them overall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Jeff? I, I will not take the Pistons. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully they'll do a complete revamping. But uh, honestly, like Toronto, to me, that I'm, I'm telling you right now, that's my team in the East. I'm going to ride that out until they lose. Um, I, I don't see – I mean, the only team that really can compete with them is Cleveland. That's just because of LeBron. Right. But uh, Boston without Ky- Kyrie is going to be difficult. I think Philly is a good team, just a little bit too young. You know, if they right. if they can pick up like maybe one more, you know, pivotal player, then they then they could step up. But honestly, like you know, the Miami Heat playing Boston, that's going to be a challenge. You know, I think oh. the Heat's going to be able to mm-hmm. give them a little bit of pressure. And you know, in, in, you start playing extra games in those series in the NBA series, man, it gets difficult. Okay, so Toronto and Washington, who's your pick? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm taking Toronto. <laughs> okay, okay, Toronto. So All I'm right. gonna take uh, I'm gonna take Boston. If Hang you really want to go down the line, okay. L- l- sorry, listen, no, you tell me. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. I, I don't even get a pick nowadays. You know, so right. I'm gonna also go with Toronto. Okay. I don't I don't see any way they lose that series unless something really bizarre happens. Beautiful. All right, next one: uh, Boston and uh, Miami. Uh, Jeff, you go ahead. I'm going to take Boston, but I think that's going to be a tough series. Don't be surprised if the if Boston loses. Okay. Yeah. Toronto? Yeah. Uh, Toronto. I, Torrance? <laughs> uh, right, right. It's, uh, T-O-R is close. Uh, I'm going with Miami. I was talking with someone the other day, and I think that without Kyrie, I was going to Kyrie them all, you know, when he went up there. But without, with, with him not playing, I, I think Jalen Brown is good. Tatum's nice. But, you know, Hassan, uh, Hassan Whiteside is good and Drogic. And Winslow, Richardson, those guys play tough together. Yeah, you know, and, and yeah. Jones, I think they just trying to rebuild their whole little flair. And it's going to, like Jeff said, it's going to be a tough series. I would not be surprised if Boston lose. And uh, yeah, I'm going with Miami. Uh, neither would I because yeah, like I'm it. also going with Miami. Uh, I think that Boston has to work way too hard. And uh-huh. uh, I, I think that they may very well win the series. But they're going to, the, the battle, but they're going to end up losing the war at some point. Uh, oh, yeah. If it's not against Miami, it'll be in the next round. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you know, and it's just unfortunate with uh, with the injuries. Okay, yeah, next that's... series, Philadelphia and um, looks like Philadelphia and Milwaukee. Um, right. Torrance, you want to go first? Um, I'm definitely a fan of the Greek Fleet. However, I don't think that his coaching is going to get him over the hump. I'm going with the, the Ben Simmons. I, I believe in them right now. They just got the momentum going. Oh yeah, they just look, they look comfortable. You're going into playoffs with a 15 game winning streak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, these guys believe in themselves. You know, so they look ready. I think Chris Middleton he can shoot. Jabari Parker doing this thing a little bit. I just don't think they're fast enough for them. You know, it's just. They just on another gear right now. I think Philly just 
a better team. Oh yeah. No, I agree. JB. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna take Philly as well. I think that uh, I think again you're gonna see a great series there. You know, Milwaukee's not gonna go down without winning. They're, I don't think it'll be a sweep. Although that five game no, no. series uh-huh. still is a. Uh, that's always the tough one. I mean, because yeah. because it's a five game series, like. You know, you put a get together a couple games, and you got somebody against the ropes in a hurry. Yeah, you can't muck about. Uh, I mean, you can't really afford to lose that very first game, especially if you're the home team. Right. You know, then right. it's, yeah, then all bets are off. Yeah, because you're you're now it flipped it where that other team can win it in their house. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to also go with Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, I just don't think the the Greek freak alone is enough to uh, yeah, to, to lift enough. that boat. Okay, uh, Cleveland, Cleveland and Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland, Indiana. I think we've got JB's. Uh, he's going to go with Cleveland. Um, Torrance, where are you going to go with? Hey, you know, got to go with the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? Uh, LBJ. He got, of this time, not all time, all time, but this time. Yeah, got it. And I'm also going to go with Cleveland. Yeah, it's really, that should be pretty easy, man. Indiana's, you know, they, they're kind of like one of those teams that just kind of always shows up, but like, never really does anything just enough to sell the fans just enough to get the fans that yeah yeah, there's hope (laughs) but that's all there is and they're like yeah one and done you know one and one series and (laughs) yeah it's just for some bizarre reason it's i I think they're just jinxed yeah you know and uh and they Mm -hmm. usually end up with a tough draw no matter where of course because of where they i mean they usually fall like in this spot where they're going to play a team that's very comparable to them and in this case uh you know it's uh you know they'll get a game out of it but I think ultimately it'll be, uh, you know, Cleveland's going to take that series. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. It's probably, that's a scrimmage for them. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 they're probably looking at it like a scrimmage as well. All right. So we've got uh, going into the West now. So we're going to have Houston against either uh, Minnesota or Denver. I don't think it's either one of those teams they play. Houston wins easily. Yeah. Okay, JB's uh, out of the gate with Houston. Torrance? <sighs> I'm gonna go with Minnesota, man. <laughs> oh, wow! I do. I, I'm telling you, I just believe in Thibodeau. T- listen, because I was telling the boys in their baseball practice the other day. I say, defense wins championships, and I know one thing about it. Then Tony don't care no nothing about no defense. He just want to score like the new Steve Nash now with the Rockets. Yeah. Well, Tom yeah. Thibodeau, he got some monsters over there. He got some young athletes. Okay, so hold on. So based upon your theory here, <laughs> the opponents' point per game. There's only two teams that have held their 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 uh, opposing opponents under 100 points. Those two teams are San Antonio, 96.8, and in Utah, in Utah, 98 point or I'm sorry, 99.8. So based upon right. that, Utah's let's just go to the book right now and just like cash it in. No, I, I you I'm, you can go by stats sometimes, but when you watch, I've watched those players from Minnesota. I've seen Jeff Teague over here. I've seen Jamal Crawford over here. Yeah, Wiggins and Towns, they still young, but I believe in it. They're better than besides Harden, Wiggins and Towns are actually better than anybody else on Houston. I like it. Yeah. Athletically, all around. Well, I too am going to go with Minnesota. Oh my gosh! And that's yeah. Uh, that, all right, hold on. So, I what's the score of that gonna... game? Because this team might not even make it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So let's. <laughs> we might be ahead of ourselves here. I should have prefer should have prefaced that if oh, Minnesota hold on, wins. Hold on a second here. <laughs> Since you both went right. there. Yeah, they might Uh-oh. just be. May have to just uh, change this uh, dynamic here real quick. Oh, okay, they're up three with 11-11 to go. Make a wish. Oh, well, yeah, they still got to win a game. I thought yeah. the game was over. No, no, no. They're, they're showing it. And that's the thing about the standings right now at the West because it looks like that this other one, this other series, the next one we're going to talk about could switch. Yeah, and that's uh, Golden State and, uh, and OKC. This is the No, Golden State and OKC series. would be said. It would be the next one. It would be the Utah yeah. San Antonio. The, the other two, actually. Okay, so Golden State and OKC. I, I just don't think, this is my personal opinion, but I don't think that – just one player can do it. I think Golden State, I mean, you're, you're without Steph Curry, I mean, questionable, you know, like whether he's going to play. Um, I don't – I can't see Oklahoma coming back and winning this series. I think they might win a game. But, I mean, yeah. it would be fair to say that they're, it's going to be a 3-1. With or without Steph Curry, Golden State wins this series. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Torrance? Yeah, I because – Unfortunately, Russell Westbrook, he's a great athlete, but he can't finish games. So, 
Yeah, I believe in KD and Draymond Green and Klay Thompson and Eagle Dollar and, and Sean Livingston and Steve Kerr. I believe in that organization a little more. I think they'll pull the right punches at the right time and use uh, Westbrook energy against himself, like some judo or something, and they'll follow themselves looking up in the camera and the game's over. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, we've only got a few minutes here. So right now, the, the series would be Utah and San Antonio. Uh, Utah. Like, Utah. Like Utah. Got it. Uh, Utah? Yep. Utah. I'll, I'm, too, going to go with Utah on that. I just think that they're too strong. And right now, of course, uh, we're looking at uh, Portland and New Orleans. Trailblazers. Portland. Man, that's such a good series. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing about it is those four teams are almost like any team that can win. And Yeah. And I'll put it like this. Whoever plays San Antonio wins. Wins. I can't say that necessarily with the Pelicans because yeah. I think that the the presence of the interior of the Pelicans can kind of stir up a little bit more in in the Jazz. That will dominate the inside of, of the Trailblazers. Yeah. So, um, man, that's a really tough one. I, I I'm going to say it like this: if it if it, if Utah wins tonight and wins the division, mm-hmm. I'm going to take Utah to beat San Antonio and Portland to beat New Orleans. Okay. How about that? I'm going to take New Orleans uh, to take uh, to beat Portland. Okay. If they play Portland, but if they play Utah, not a chance. Yeah. So you're, you're saying that, that Utah will beat uh, New Orleans? I'm saying that Utah would beat New Orleans. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. All what right. do you think? I mean, you got an opinion on that? We got about a minute. Well, I I like uh, with New Orleans, I think Merrick, Merrick, I think that's his name, he actually helped that team a lot, and I think Holiday is a good guard. Yeah. Um, I they could. I think they like you just said. The interior is tough. Um, I like. I like. I like my boy Donovan Mitchell. I think he's older than what he is. He's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he lied in his birth certificate. Like those years, little he, kids. Yeah, he, he forgot about those two, years. Man. He went barefoot. <laughs> yeah. he, he's been here before. <laughs> yeah, he's a little old, a little longer. I than love the way the dude shoots, of, man. Yeah. You know, I honestly, I see New Orleans as one of these teams that they're going to realize they have absolutely, positively nothing to lose. Yep. They're going to lay it all on the line, and they have a chance to really, if they win that first series, uh, to then just throw the, everything else in the chaos as far as the West is concerned. I agree. All right. Yeah, New Orleans, they they nice. Ads are true. Yeah, all right, man. Look out. All right, yep, yep. Well, listen, what we're gonna do is, uh, you know, uh, after uh, tonight, we'll reach out to each other to to finalize if there are any changes in those series, so we can have our picks. Can do that. So we can follow these week to week, and then uh, you know, try to get you on the show, and then see where these teams are on the break of elimination. And uh, but as always, Torrance, we really appreciate you calling in, brother. I appreciate every time, man. You guys are great. Appreciate your Vegas. Love y'all. Hey, man, we're going to enjoy good playoffs, man. It's going to be one of the best playoff series in a long time. Hey, give, give us a quick shout-out on, on your uh, your stuff. Oh, well, you can look me up on uh, Instagram at Just One Taste, and Ooh. you can check me out at Chef Hall, under, Chef Hall underscore Specialty 79. Beautiful. All right, Thanks, man. Sir. You take care, and you have a Thanks. great week, brother. Yes, indeed. And I'll also be doing an event at the Film Hub ATL on May the 3rd. Hey, awesome. all right, man. Tell you, I love you, it. Uh, and good luck on that event, man. Damn, still waiting for my Henny strawberries, by the way. Oh, <laughs> I got you. I got you. As soon as you fly down here, I got you, brother. I'll see you at Super Bowl time. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Take care, man. Thank you. Indeed. Take care. All right, our man Torrance Hall down the ATL because the NBA playoffs are looking more and more set. We've only got a couple of games left, but we'll follow up next week to see where everybody's at. Join us next Wednesday, April 18th, 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time for another installment of Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from www.tv.com. Have a great week.